eight ounce uh, bullet weight, and then and then the uh, hook from the middle. How is that the six inch straight for Yes, sir. It is. Yeah, it is. Okay, this is, that's a good question. I don't use no weight at all. Oh, you don't? Sure. Okay. Do you do you remember? Um, what did they do? What they call the Carolina rig, we have the leader in the swivel. Right. Okay, I use a number two ten swivel here, 24 inches away on high, a number 4 oval hook that I prefer. Okay, I take a six inch worm. If it's a red shag, I put my thumb on her back. The back is what I call the black side of that worm. I put the hook right next to my thumb, using my thumb for a measurement. I don't want it off center. I want to try to hook it in the center perfectly as possible, okay? Yeah. And if you put it on the hook, she hangs down like that, okay? Yeah, yeah. And with the leader and my swivel, <coughs> that gives me just enough weight where I can cast it pretty comfortable when I'm using the six, eight pound test line. I would recommend 10 or 12 pounds. Even right? on the leader, you still use the six or eight? They get, no, 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 I cheat there. I go a little bit heavy. Okay, yeah. No, I'm not that nuts yet, you know All what I'm right. saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I would get more hits if I would do that. But I'm using, um, I'm not using too much. I never go over 10. Right. I think I'm down to 8 pounds on my fingers now. Because I make up a bunch of them, you know? And you know, the funny thing about it, I don't really break. People say, raise their hand when I do these balls. I can sure break it off all the time. So. But what do you do? Just move it in slow, jerk it off? See, yeah, when I cast out what I call my temptation rate, right. I'll cast it out and you, you let the last ripple disappear like, it, like, like a lot of directions come with different lures, I let the lace ripple disappear, and I let it lay there, I let it lay there. My record, and I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, was over 40 some minutes, but I caught a fish over 13 pounds. And this was not with the worm, this was the rappel. Yeah. I, the key to my success is I learned how to, to, to be, you know, um, patient, you know, there's three key words, patience, Self-discipline and confidence, a lot of truth in that. Right. I let it lay there and let it lay there. And with the worm. With the worm. With, 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 with the worm on the bottom or the rappel on the top. Right. I'm, I'm not into casting and retrieving it right back. The only time I'll do that is if my fish are school. Okay. Common sense such why would I let the bait lay out there when my fish are jumping all over the place? Yeah. When it's tough, when you're when you're dealing with water that's almost 90 degrees. Right now my water temperature is 88, 89. High noon, about 92 degrees surface temperature. This is hot, okay? Do you think I feel like running? Well, the, the fish are no different than I do. So I'll cast it out there and I'll let it lay. Every time I bring it in, now that it's hot, I drop the worm out of the plastic bag where I have a lot of worm off. I, I, I'm a firm believer of keeping a lot of worm off. And it's not because they like vanilla chocolate and strawberry. I want to kill buds, scent, okay, or any other human. And I'll let it lay there. If you would try this, I'll guarantee you that next time you see me, you'll call me and say, but I'll catch you more fish I ever did before. Because fish aren't always active, just like you know, different as human beings. We're not all active. And the hotter it gets, the more inactive that the old man gets. Any other uh, questions you'd like to ask? So if your son was uh, good at salt water? Yeah. Oh, he's, you can see his beautiful salt water boat. How big is your boat? 27 foot. Makes my boat look like a canoe. Of course, I use a bass boat. You know, Ranger's my sponsor. I, what is my boat? 21 foot? About 22 foot? And uh, I, I do like Ranger. And, and, and I thank God that I had the opportunity of getting involved with Ranger when I was on the surface. Because the one terrible storm, all these years I've fished the surface, we never lost anybody. When I come back to Florida, the fish, the circuit, where I'm psyched up because this is fun this is my home turf, we lose two guys. I mean, that's the only time we ever lost professional fishermen. And what happened, we got out there on Lake Tahoe, that's on the Kissimmee chain, and, and we got up, yeah, I can't pronounce it, you're, you're smarter than I am. <laughs> um, the wind came up, and we had six to eight foot waves. And very few of us made it back. And the few of us, made, this is what I first started out to expect bring to the And I was scared. I was so scared. I, and, and my, my, you know, I had that. I think I had a boy from Ohio. He was saying his prayers, God bless him. 
I'm telling you right now, six to eight foot waves in the past. No bad stuff was built for rough water. We were taking the waves right all over. Thank God I went. I just had that done too. I had extra, real large bilge pumps because the water was just coming out at all times, you know. And we were in water, because I said, my boat at least that deep. Right. Yeah, yeah, the first, because I got like two floors in, and it was filled with water all the time. I really thought it was going to be over. And uh, <clears throat> like I said before, we never had a tragedy ever before in competition. And that had to happen right here in my home state on, on the Kissimmee chain. And you know, what, what happens here in Florida? Our lakes aren't real deep. It's shallow water. So when you get up to five to ten, you see a white cap real fast. Well, you can imagine when you start pushing 15, 20, 25, 30 knots, what the water's going to be like. I almost gave it up. I love the water, I love fishing, but I'm not too proud to admit that I was a little baby that day. And I just thank God that I didn't lose my pool. The kids next to me were almost, almost panicked. And uh, uh, of course, one tournament, I forgot about that, on uh, on, on Lake Eustis. <coughs> Lake Eustis. When the wind comes up over there, that ain't no picnic either. And I hit a wave roll and threw both of us out. And I'm on the steel, I still got trouble. But God bless the kill switch, because it worked. You know, and, and my boat went <coughs> around in circles too, and then we got back on. And that was really rough. When it gets, you know, these lakes get, get rough because the water is so shallow. And shallow water will, will turn up a lot quicker than deep, deep water. You know what I'm saying? You gotta respect the water. You wanna be careful. You know, make sure you have a first aid kit, you got the proper life preservers, especially going out here in the, in, the, in, the, in the Gulf of Mexico. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a chance to fish it out there that much. I first time I don't have the boat. And uh, Johnny with his, his girlfriend and all his buddies uh, that is in last place when going out fishing, you know, but they've been doing a great job out there. Kobe, I didn't know Kobe's got that big, you know? Really nice. You gotta show us how to tie that knot. The knot slipping loop? Yeah. Um, wasn't there a pole back there that I could use? Right. Yeah, Frank, you wanna bring me that, that ball here and I'll show them how to, uh, I'll use that one here. And I got the rotella right here. God bless you. Which you got a nice thin line, John. I don't want to add rope so I can see. <laughs> no, okay, the first, the first thing you want to do is learn how to see right. Is make, make a loop. There's the end of your line. So you want to make a loop. There's the end of the line where my thumb is on my right hand, and there's the loop, okay? Of course, I can't see it here, but I expect you to see it there. You've got a little loop there. Line. Now, at the end of your line, line, you put it through the eye. When you put it through the eye, they go back through the, uh, the loop here. And then grab both strands of the line and tighten it down. Not right up against the eye of the uh, of the lure, they have a little bit of room because you want a little space there. You don't want to tie directly because now, now you don't want to get no action out of it except straight. But, but that little loop, you just want to kick the right kick to the left. Now, if you do that with a loose line, go ahead and wrap it. Wrap it about three, four times. Yeah, four times the size. Okay? Then you go back into the, the first opening. And once you put that through, let's go back through the, the big loop you just made there. And then you pull it down tight. Then with your thumbnail, slide it down. And there's a perfect non-slipping loop right there. And that's perfect because now you've got the room for it to go like this, to the left, to the right. And of course, you, know, you cut cut this down about a quarter of an inch away. You know? That's what you call the non-slipping loop. And 